I was alerted to a couple of items when I was checking my emails uh, last night that I thought would be worthy of pointing out to my lovely audience. Uh, the first thing was about Bill Gates. Uh, apparently, Bill Gates is um, a bit concerned that the planet is uh, in that era of global boiling. And so he thought, well, maybe we should dim the skies a bit uh, by polluting the atmosphere with various particulates which will reflect the sunshine uh, out from the planet and prevent us from boiling. I think really what's going on is that so many people now are talking about chemtrails. It's so bleeding obvious that they've been mucking about with the sky and making what was, say, a summer into pretty much a winter. I mean, the other day I drove down on the M4 corridor and it was pouring with rain. You could see the graphene in the clouds. You you could see it there and thinking, yeah, mm, it's uh, supposed to be global boiling, but actually we seem to be in a bit of a cold snap, not a warm snap. But anyway, it, the last few months, I think it's been so obvious and people have been mentioning the, uh, the whole thing about chemtrails and the dimming of the skies. Farmers have been noticing it, of course, because their crops are going to fail if they carry on with this sort of nonsense, because the summer is the time when you get that photosynthesis actually working properly. Uh, today, I'm pleased to say, as I peer out of my window, there is a bit of blue sky. But I think they allow us a couple of days of it so that we don't notice too much. But people are noticing. And I think in order to sort of get over this, Bill Gates and his clones have decided, do you know what? Uh, we better start making it into a thing. So, of course, they're now saying, yeah, no, 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 we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Whether you like it or not, we're going to dim the skies. So that was one of the slightly worrying things that I think that we should all be putting our fists up and saying, oi, you, I don't think we, uh, we want any of this. We would rather have nice, clean skies and get on with it and worry about if the planet is warming or not down to ourselves and not have a top-down global government deciding to do these things for us. The other thing that uh, t tickled me, actually, was, of course, technology is marching on. And sometimes I feel that technology is marching on quicker than the globalists or the, the elite of this world, let's uh, put the inverted brackets around them, the cabal that want this one world government, that think that they want to uh, enslave us all by putting us with digital IDs and sticking us in 15 minute cities, convincing us that net zero is a good thing and making us eat mealworms and things like that. Um, it tickled me that the technology, I think, is far advanced of them because um, people have been mucking about with this, you know, this thing called deep fake. I think that's the name of it, where you can get uh, film stars and they can reappear in films, even though they've been dead for 20 years or longer. Uh, and so therefore they are appear as if they really are there. Well, it seems that this now is in the hands of anybody, amateurs. So you could probably make a version of me sitting here doing my rambles, my monologues, um, and, and you could, with just a very simple uh, technical program that you download from the internet, you could make a version of me. Well, if that's possible and if that's the case, doesn't that make facial recognition technology obsolete because how do you now prove if you've got a facial recognition camera of somebody in the street and not say well that could be deep fake I'm telling you I wasn't there you're saying I was there because you've got a bit of video footage of it but that video footage we now know could be is easily manipulative. So how do you prove otherwise? So it seems to me that facial recognition technology is, is, had, is, is out the window before it's even started. Uh, because I think you could just legally say, well, sorry, mate, prove it's not me. How do they do it? Now, of course, that might be that they then want to push you towards the biometrics. They say, ah, well, what we need to do, of course, is to gather your fingerprints and your eyes the, uh, the uniqueness of your eyes, the biometrics. So we have that in your computer. Well, I think that that's definitely one thing that they might be able to do, but if they're going to keep it on some sort of digital platform, that too most likely will be hacked into and changed. And you would say, well, how do you prove that that digital identification is actually me? I think all of these things, once you go into the digital world, it's immensely easy for those hackers who know how to do this to muck about with it. So it won't be long before the technology, even though they've got biometrics about 
about you will be obsolete too because they just won't be able to prove it. The only way you can prove who you are is by standing in front of somebody and saying, look, I am real. I've got blood and bones inside me. I am a sentient being. I'm not some digital thing. So in a way, it makes me think that all this digital ID nonsense and all these biometrics and this face recognition technology is going to disappear in a puff of smoke before we even know it, before it even gets started. Well, that's my hope. Uh, but uh, I'd be interested in your thoughts. What do you think is going to happen? Have you dabbled about with the deep fake? Can you tell the difference between somebody on video who's genuinely real or one that's been... I don't know, manipulated, changed. I gather that even Zoom now, the program that I use when I my interviews, that that has just changed its terms and conditions. And if you're somebody that uses Zoom, you might want to look into that because apparently now they can not only copy it, take it, use it, modify it, but they can even introduce AI as far as I understand. And so then you don't even know who it is you're talking to across a platform like Zoom. So maybe we're going to have to need some sort of sovereign platform to uh, in conduct our future correspondence. Or even better, perhaps we should just meet in the real world and forget some of this new technology nonsense and keep things back to being how they used to be. And that is 100% genuine and real.